Good after morning. Welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the Four Please Run to or get your Excel. And today we have actually quite a lot to get through. Starting off with the winter specials. A lot of you have been asking when they're going to end. It looks like it's going to be end of July, first week of August. So if there's something that's caught your eye that you've been waiting to get paydays around the corner, strike while the gavel is hot, as it were. The next thing that I've got to speak about is the stream, which we have every Wednesday and Saturday. You, you will see me on Wookie Wednesdays. That's why I'm not doing the bias card on a Tuesday because I'm live on Twitch from 1 to 4 on Eve Tech's Twitch. This week, we are going to be doing War Thunder and there are giveaways every single week. And similarly, on Saturdays, you will be seeing our one and only promo queen, the Bundle Bunny, where she will be doing more gaming and more giveaways, generally more community-driven stuff because it's easier for people to get there on a Saturday. Makes sense, right? Anyway, the last thing that I've got to mention before we get into this week's buyer's guide is the AMD 9000 series CPUs. They have landed with Uncle Etech and they are on the way to me now. And I should have the full benchmark data out for you on the 31st on the embargo lift. Let's hope and pray that we can get everything done by then. But it's really cool to see AMD supporting us in South Africa with even more awesome samples. And finally, for today, the buyer's guide is going to be focused on the 8700F and the upgrade kit that's just been launched in EVTEC with that, along with the review that I did last week. It gave me exceptional gaming performance, pretty good multi-threading performance, especially at the price point, but it also has the AI compute course capable of 16 T-flops. So it's a little bit of a round, rounded product, and it's going to be really good as like a gaming and streaming companion. So I thought, let me do basically the best bang for buck or the build that i would see you buy based on what i call the golden ratio so i say in general based on your budget your upgrade kit and your gpu should be about the same price and they should each be about 35 percent of your total budget with that being you know the 30 percent left over then for case cooling ssd power supply and so working on that golden ratio i've put together a build for just under thirty thousand rand so starting off with the upgrade kit we have the or the 8700f i'm going with the b650s just because of upgradability and i've increased the ram to 32 gig you are going to see performance per megahertz so if you want to do 6000 the option is there but I would say you're still going to be okay if you just go with the 5600 megahertz. You're probably going to get maybe a 3 to 5% if you do get the improved RAM. So it's a 400 buck increase. It's not a lot to go with that. So do take it into consideration, but the 5600 megahertz should be absolutely perfect. Then, because as I've tested, the stock cooler does not really butter many parsnips, you are going to want to get a bit of a better air cooler. We're going with this AG500 because it's got the most direct contact heat pipes for the money. It's on special. It's 649 It's kind of a steal for that. It comes with a three-year warranty that includes the fan as well. So it's going to have some longevity. And at the end of the fan's lifetime, the block isn't ever going anywhere it's something i'd really do like about air coolers and with all of these direct contact heat pipes the performance has been increased significantly this is rated at 240 watt and i got 200 watts out of the ak400 where it's rated at that it was just good enough to keep the uh, 13600k at its default boost clocks which should charge about 200 watt um it's nice to have a hot boy cpu to test that but i didn't see anything near that when i was using the 8700f with a 240 mil rad so as an air cooling build and to save a little bit of money against that budget this is what we're going for. Then for GPU, this is basically the best bang for buck GPU on the market right now is the 7800 XT. It's got 16 gig VRAM and processors and all that, but I want to show you something on the tech power up charts, which is really, really, I love this. It's super, super useful. Notice its positioning. It's basically a 3080. It's just behind the 4070 Super, which is going to be better if you're going to do streaming. But the cheapest one on the store is a pallet and it's 14,000 Rand. Compared to this sucker, which I just closed the window on, is 11 and a half. So the price versus performance here is exceptional. You can stream through this. It's not going to give you the visual quality that NVENC will, but it's still usable in that facet. But if you're just gaming, then it becomes a no-brainer. And the 16 gig video memory is going to allow us to do 2K and 100 FPS, absolutely no problems. My 3070 Ti gives me 100 FPS in most 2K tests, 
barring cyberpunk at absolute ultra rt kind of levels but be it and even then that still hits like nearly 70 fps so this will be quite a hefty boy in the, in the system for ssd i'm just going to pick the best bang for buck gen 4 which is still the a data xpg this is our benchmark drive on the channel it gave me really good small file handling speeds as well within like 80 90 percent of the giga premiums you know with the kingston uh series uh, fury series and the samsung pro series then for PSU, the Corsair RM 750 is just kind of a no-brainer. Our CPU is going to max out at like 100, 110 watt is what it's going to draw, even full multi-threading. In gaming, it's probably going to be in the 70s, so not very thirsty. 80 or so watts for the motherboard, and then the GPU being the biggest draw on about 300. That's still only going to be like half. Um, or just over so that's gonna you, you're gonna look at a absolute maximum system draw of about 400 watts from this so an 80 plus gold 750 is nicely overkill so it never has to work too hard big plus of this as well is it comes with a 10 year warranty another power supply that i gotta mention just because it's there and it's at the right sort of price is this 800 watt from cooler master same same but half the warranty so i'd still push you to go for the corsair now for case we have a lot of options I really like the CK560 as a default. It's a little bit more set up for water cooling because of the way that the fans and stuff are set up, but we're not really going to worry about that. I don't think airflow is really going to be an issue in any case. A big plus with this is it comes with a GPU sag bracket, which you can see over there. It's really cheap for a case that does come with four fans and a GPU sag bracket, which is why i kind of still suggest it and over first two-year warranty on this sucker as well another good option is the new ch560 which is just mesh front it's way better uh, uh i would like way better it's it's worth the price in the airflow if you don't have the budget just go for the ck560 but similarly it's also got a gpu sag bracket over here which is fully adjustable so throughout the lifetime of the case it's going to be good a big plus with this is it comes with four or three 140 mil fans up front, which is just going to give better airflow versus RPM. So it's going to be quieter than the CK560 to get the same kind of cooling performance. Another consideration you really got to look at is the Meshify 2. The compact is going to be fine for this current build. It is a little bit shorter. It's got a 360 mil uh, space for the GPU, which is similar to the CK560, but it comes with the fans as well included. So the value is pretty good. I will, however, say the full one is generally a little bit better because it's got four of the 40, 140 mils so these are a little bit more premium as you can see those deep cools are the value proposition but these are a little bit better quality i've spec the ck560 for this build so that's what you'll see in the final card and speaking of final card having a look at it this is what it's going to look like you can see the price of the upgrade kit including the cooling is almost identical to the gpu cost this is how you can even without knowing really the spec of a component balance your budget against your output performance um, you can obviously go way more for gpu but this is a well-rounded system that's going to give you performance no matter what you're looking at doing and you can see with the ck560 and the power supply it comes to just under 30k however that is basically the launch price of a 30 80 18 months ago so now you're getting a full pc with that kind of level of performance for the, for the price of what the gpu just cost i did however see an intel upgrade kit as well that i think is worth mentioning at this point in time is this 12700f it's probably not going to give you quite as good single core performance but it is going to give you performance in areas like unity as a good example that the amd still won't be able to output so if you're looking at it like for a tarkov build as an example i would steer you towards this and if you have a need for more multi-threaded performance this will crunch on multi-threading it should go uh well over 20 23,000 on cinebench with this setup um compared to about 17,000 is what you're going to get with the 8700f but single core performance 8700f definitely wins but thanks to uncle Etech, this is a z790 motherboard over here as well so you are going to have some nice implant upgradability and a good it's just a really good chipset honestly um is a really big attractive part over here the 12700f it's non-k 
So you're not going to get those huge single core performance numbers, but it's still going it, to multi-threading. It should absolutely bully beat down the other chip. And that, my Lipshins, is your bonus guide for the week. I do hope you have enjoyed it. As I say, we'll be doing streams and other upcoming stuff. So just stay tuned to the social media so you know what's happening when it's happening. Of course, there's always more gaming and giveaways to come from Uncle Eve Tech. Until next time, uh, there's, well, there's, I'm also doing uh, the Gum Diaz, the new digital cooler from them later in this week. And I'm finishing off the Monka series with their speakers, which will be the two reviews for this week. And then, like I said, early next week, I'm going to get those AMD 9000 series benchmarks out to you. Anywho, that is all I have for you. If you have enjoyed this, please do us up with a like and subscribe. And I will see you on the flip side.